Hey guys, I want to welcome you and let you know how great it is to have you here for the Greater Purpose Podcast. What's up? That's how they make Welcome to the Greater Purpose Podcast from the Cubs Room. Cheering crowd is here. Did you hear the crowd back there? Is that awesome? What? So great to be here, and it's great to have Scott Sheehan. We're going to introduce him in just a minute, but I got to do some due diligence. Otherwise, I'll get fired by my producer, and I don't want to be fired from my own podcast. So go to the this website will take you back to the greater purpose, but it will also take you to some other ministries and some other things going on. So that's the easy landing page, bwasap.com. If you'll visit that, that will be wonderful. We're also continuing to promote the book that Shannon Williams has written, Revelation Unlocked. It's a great study book. We had to stop him from telling everything about it <laughs> because you don't need to buy the book if you can watch the video. But so anyway, yeah. <clears throat> and he's working on an audio book too. So that'd be oh, good. Cool. But it's a great cool. study book. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. And those are the main things that I'm supposed to cover. My producer was here for a podcast we recorded earlier and then he left. I did so see him, by the way. He, he was he, here. See? Yeah. He knows I really have a producer, and you'll know too because you'll see it on the one of the podcasts, there but not go. on this there one. You go. I don't know what it is. He comes, he leaves. I don't know. He thinks he can just come and go, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, Stephen Wright is a great friend and a good man, and I appreciate his influence on me. And in his, in his influence, the Greater Purpose podcast would never have happened if it wasn't for him. There you go. So let's jump right into it. Let's introduce Scott Sheehan. Yes, sir. So tell us who you are, my brother. Uh, Scott Sheehan, Gaston County, born and raised. I've been here my whole life. Uh, my parents, actually, my dad's family grew up in Cleveland County. So, you know, we're still pretty local. There not you go. far at all. Right. Um, you know. Ted Alexander's stomping grounds. Right? There you go. Yep. There you go. I actually came from a town called Lawndale, if you're familiar oh, yeah. with that. Sure. Very small. Yeah. One stoplight in the whole town still yeah. to this day. But, uh, yeah, great, great little upbringing there. Yeah. Just uh, with just good old hearty country people. And, right. uh, you know, learn the value of hard work. and yep. Learn the importance and value of being a godly man. Well, Scott is here today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And your business? Uh, I'm actually, I've got several. Yeah. Uh, I've got my main business is A Plus Lawn Care and Landscaping Incorporated. Oh, um, I bet he'd freak out when he came out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put crab grass out there. Uh, that kind of yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but that's only so we've been there for over 20 years. Nice. Now. Okay. Uh, we also have an A Plus Landscaping Incorporated, which is a landscape supply yard that okay. we sell material, you know, gravel, gotcha. rock, whatever. Yeah. Um, then I also farm. Silas nice. Ridge Farms. Oh, there you go. We got a farm in Dallas. We do wheat and soybean, right. and then we've got some rental property. Star Management Group is also wow. mine, and uh, then we're doing a bid now for a county commissioner seat. So, wow, a lot going on. I busy thought times. I was a busy guy. <laughs> this guy right here is extremely busy. So we have a lot going on, but I like it that way. Yeah, uh, I don't like sitting still. Mm-hmm. I don't hounds are the devil's play toys. Yes, so sir. we don't Absolutely. want that. Yep, appreciate that. That's yes, cool. Sir. So what do you? So what would you say was the first? Uh, and maybe for some guys, it's a progression. It takes a few years, uh, mm-hmm. but for some guys, it's just that moment when they know that, Hey, I need to become the, the man that God wants me to become. So when would you say that? I was very young. Okay. And like a lot of kids, I think in our age range, we spent a lot of time with our grandparents yeah. growing up mm-hmm. and my dad's parents were instrumental in my upbringing. Nice. Um, just country people never had anything, but what I saw as a kid growing up is they were happy. Mm. They were always happy. They had such joy in the little things of life sure. and they had such joy in people. And that's what they instilled in me. And one of the greatest life lessons that they ever taught me was you're supposed to leave people in a better condition than you found them. Mm-hmm. And so as a, as a young man, I always tried to do that. And I still do to this day. I want to be a help to people. I want to be an encouragement and I want to be a support Sure, because that's what God, I think, has called me to do. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah, I was listening to, I think, Michael Youssef this morning. He was talking about, uh, about um, no, we don't ask God to, to, to bring us into the bad times. But we're, right. when we're in the bad times, the joy that we have in him is what brings Amen. us through. Yes, so sir. that's cool. That's yes, awesome. Sir. Great. So in that transition or in that moment moment in time or all that kind of stuff and since then who would you say would be the man or the woman uh, or one of each we've had guests say that there were a couple of influences that inspired you uh that inspired you to that point and even beyond that point both of my grandparents uh, mama and papa gotcha. um, they were the most influential people in mm-hmm. my life yeah um uh, mama came from a large family 
she had to quit school in the seventh grade mm. to go to earn money for coal to heat the house for wow. the family. Right. And so she did that because it was the right thing to do. Um, and I remember <laughs> the house that they bought when they first got married. I still have that house to this day. Oh, wow. It's cool. one of my rentals. And every time I would go, she would be in the kitchen cooking a pot mm -hmm. of cabbage or yeah. stew beef. Yeah. And she yeah. would never want somebody to come by and not have something to eat. That That's was right. just her way. Wow. And she'd be in the kitchen over the sink and she'd be working. And she'd always be singing a gospel hymn. Amen. Every awesome. day. Yeah. And she'd be looking out the mm -hmm. window. And as cars would pass by in that little small town, she would say a prayer of wow. every car that wow. would pass. Amazing. Yeah. And, you know, Papa, bless his heart, grew up without a dad. His mm -hmm. father passed the night he was born. And so never having that kind of a male influence in his life, um, he struggled. Mm -hmm. But he really did a great, great job uh, of coming up to be a very godly man. And his career was in the tire business. Okay. He delivered tires for Oakey's Tire in Shelby for many, many years. Dirty job. Yeah. But what I can remember is he always knew how important it was to make a first impression. Mm -hmm. And so his attire would be dress pants, a tucked in shirt, and a tie there you go. to go wow. deliver tires. Yeah. And because he wanted to put his best foot forward and he understood how important that that was. Mm -hmm. And that was very instrumental to me. Not saying I'm clean shaven every day. I apologize. <laughs> I try okay. to be. Hey, but, it's a um, different culture now, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, they were very instrumental. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I don't even do that on Saturdays. You know, I don't. <laughs> But uh, I have to for the podcast. I, got I had to get up I early you. just for this. No, I'm just just kidding. But no, I get that. And you know, I think that's uh, I think that's true a lot today. Um, and I get it. Sometimes you're casual, you dress down. I get that. Sure. Uh, yeah. But there's certain times that we need to make that that positive yes. impression. I think that's important. Absolutely. And I think you do that. So that's Thank cool. You. That's Thank great. You. So okay. So uh, based upon all that and your progression in your life as becoming the, the man God wants you to be, mm -hmm. how do you think you are best? able to affect other lives, other men's lives or boys' lives? Integrity. Ah, nice. Integrity yeah. is the thing that I live every day by. Yeah. And I think integrity means a lot of different things to different people. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's doing the right thing when nobody's looking. Right. And because that's what we should do. Right. Because I don't want accolades. I don't want fame, fortune, and glory. Mm -hmm. I want to do what's right because it's right. Yeah. And I wish if more people did that, we'd be in a lot better position these days. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, David Jeremiah preaches on that a lot. And that's kind of yes. where I learned my um, I don't have lunch. If I had to have a business lunch with a female, yep. it'd be in the middle of the room. So Amen. That everybody can see what's Amen. going on. I'm not driving a female uh, that's not a relative <laughs> or a very <laughs> maybe a close. We have a neighbor who's like a relative that I'm not going to drive her to the airport, just me and her in the car. That kind right, of, that's the character. That's the integrity I think it is. you're talking about. And on top of that, you know, I'm very involved in the local Masonic Lodge here. Mm -hmm. I'm a member of South Fork 462. Go South Fork. Um, <laughs> well, I didn't know they had a thing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. But uh, we've actually been, uh, we're the oldest running lodge in Gaston County. Mm -hmm. We're the second oldest lodge in the state. We've been chartered here since 1894. Mm -hmm. um, and also very active in the shrine. And, you know, it's... A lot of people don't really know what all that they do. Right. We don't self-promote. We don't advertise what we do. But uh, it's all for faith, children, and mm -hmm. hope and yeah. charity. And uh, if people knew a tenth of what we got behind in this community, it would blow their minds. Yeah. And and I really I value that time and those relationships with the guys I've built there. Um, and the good that we do is it's such a blessing to me. I know that, yeah, I've seen the Shriners do a lot of really good things. And I mean, the yep. Shriners Hospital, there's, yep. I mean, that's just one very... But even on the Masonic Lodge, believe it or not, people don't really know, but we've got a, a home in Oxford, North Carolina. Okay. It's an Oxford home for children. Okay. Used to be called the Oxford Orphanage. They don't yeah. adopt kids out of that anymore. Uh, that facility is funded 100% by the lodges in the state of North Carolina. Wow. It takes children from infancy up to the age of 25. Right. They have their own campus on-site education system, so mm -hmm. they learn their education there. Right. Uh, they learn their life skills, how to run a budget, how to go to the grocery store, and um, those children are taken care of very well. And the happiness that we see on those kids' faces when we go visit, it's so heartwarming. Yeah. You just would not imagine. I had a, I had a guy at breakfast the other day say, well, how do I get, he was talking politically, mm -hmm. uh, but how do I get involved? Because I think we should be involved politically. And I'm, sure. I'm not ashamed to say that. And then I'm, I'm calling people out on it. So, <laughs> but, um, but getting involved, period. Um, there are lots of places to get involved, uh -huh. and, you yes. know, like like yeah. this, where you're involved with kids' lives and you're you're influencing. We talked about that before the podcast. Absolutely, you Absolutely. can impact the lives 
of hundreds of people by impacting the, the life of one child. Very true. So yeah, very pretty true. cool stuff. Yes. Awesome. Neat. Very nice. Okay. All right. So um, we now we come to the the we've changed the topic the, the topic title a couple of times. <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell you that. My executive producer said, don't keep saying that. I got you. I'm going to be in trouble. I won't say nothing, yeah, baby. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this is now called the five greats. Yep. Not mm -hmm. the five favorites, not the five faves. And it's not the fast five. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. don't have to, you don't have to zoom through it. Uh, okay. Because that was the point that was made to me was that, you know, if somebody wants to expand a little bit on these, sure. then this is a good place to do that. Sure. So yep. what we do, what I do is I send these guys um, some topics, uh, five men who've inspired you, five women who inspired you, uh, five favorites of the hero. I mean, favorite heroes of the faith, you know, like mm -hmm. biblical heroes mm -hmm. or even even living today <laughs> heroes um, that have inspired you. Mm -hmm. Or they can pick Bible favorites like books, mm -hmm. scriptures. Mm -hmm. Uh, topics, that kind of stuff. So yep. here we go. You ready? Oh, yeah, 100%. Go, for, yep. go ahead. So give us your five. Five men. Okay. Uh, Papa would be number one. Sure. Yep. Uh, just because of the influence he had, uh, the example that he set, and uh, the teaching he provided. Nice. Uh, it's it's instrumental. And even to this day, you know, I run into people all the time, and they'll hear my last name. Mm -hmm. It's a unique name. She has not come. Right. And people will say, Misher, because his name was Misher Odell. M-O is what he went by. Okay. And I said, yeah, oh, that, cool. that was Papa, yeah. and they're like, I can't tell you the impact he wow. had on my life. See there, yep. That's awesome. and that lasting legacy is what we all want. Sure. I feel like in our lives, right? And you know, he's been gone a very long time, but to still have that kind of interest in that legacy Amazing. behind is Amazing. touching. That is for awesome. sure. Yep. And I want to come back to the word legacy. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, for sure. Number two would be my dad. <laughs> um, he he was he was very very good to me. Uh, now he was critical of me i'll be honest with you mm -hmm. and, and i've told him that many times before over my life and but i saw as a kid growing up papa was critical of dad mm. and i think part of that was not having the father growing sure. up sure right but then skip a generation with me papa thought i was the apple of his right there I, I was the pride <laughs> yeah. of the family sure. and, and did no wrong uh and i see in the next generation my sister has a son and uh, so dad's grandson he's the apple of his eye uh -huh. so I, I see how all that works and how it transpires with sure. each other um, but dad taught me my greatest life lesson. Mm. And as an adolescent growing up, we think our parents don't know nothing. Mm. You know, right. they're, they're, they're crazy. Until <laughs> we realize they know everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, he would tell me at, at a, as a young age, he said, life is all about relationships. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, that's, that's crazy. Whatever. There's no right, point. Yeah. Okay. And I started my first business at 14. I went to work early. Mm -hmm. And I was in high school. And I was getting out of the truck one day to go to work. And I stopped dad in the driveway. And I said, I got something to say. He said, okay, what is it, son? And I said, you just ride as rain. Mm. And he said, about what? And I said, life is all about relationships. Wow. And I said, but I got something to add. And I said, business is too. Mm. And he leaned against my truck and he kind of smirked and he said, there's <laughs> hope for you. Yet. <laughs> there you go. And, um, That's great. You know, but wow. I learned that if you build the right relationships with yeah. the right people and if you nurture them, everything else falls into yep. place. You know how I feel about that. You Absolutely. nailed that one right there. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Yep. So yep. very instrumental and I love him for it. Yep. Love you, Dad. There you go. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, next one would be Doug Carpenter. Um, Doug worked with me for many years over at the landscape yard. He recently passed away this year, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But um, he had two sons, one of which actually is a lead detective at the city of Gaston okay. Police Department. Mm -hmm. The other is the greenskeeper at the country club. Yeah. So good family. But Doug, just like dad, understood the value of relationships. Nice. And, you know, he taught me that that was vitally important and to break me out of my shell. Because I know you can't really tell now, but when I was younger, I was very scared to be around really? people. Really? What? I was. I, 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 I was too. So I get it. I, I didn't I want it. to talk to people. I it, totally it get it. threw me in a very anxious state. Yeah, yeah. And um, mm -hmm. my job took me out of that. There you because go. I'm in a position I have to talk to people. Right, right. And, um, and you can find common ground with anybody. Sure. If you give them a few minutes learn about them you can find common ground and you can sure. absolutely make really good memories nice. with somebody. Right. that's great cool so yep. doug did that for you right? he did yep. he did uh the next one and this one's very special to me dwayne summit that's my best friend okay i know dwayne do i know Dwayne? you should know dwayne yeah. if you don't you need to meet dwayne yeah uh he's in the pool business yeah, I know uh, dwayne. He's, sure. he's a large brother of mine yep. and dwayne is my go-to guy yeah and we talk every day, multiple times. We went to, every day. They went to, we went to church with them for a little while. Awesome. They were Ranlow. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Okay. Him and his wife, Chantel, yep. great people. Yep. Love them dearly. Mm -hmm. um, and so anyway, 
I try to build Dwayne up all the time and I'll give him accolades and he's always like, I ain't yeah. worth nothing. I ain't <laughs> worth nothing. And I'm like, you're worth something to me. Yeah, and he'd be like, what do you mean by that? And mm. I said, you're my block of iron. Wow. And he's like, explain wow. that to me. And I'm going to get a little biblical here. Okay. Go. Proverbs 27, 17. Mm-hmm. As iron sharpens iron, right. one person should sharpen another. Sure. That's what he is for me. Wow. That's cool. You know, as, as a man in today's society, being a man's heart, mm-hmm. you know, we're taught to be tough and resilient deal with problems and issues, not break down, not show emotion, Mm. but we all need somebody. Sure do. We have to have somebody to lean on for encouragement and support and understanding. And Dwayne's that guy for me. That's awesome. And so I always try to encourage people when they're feeling down, go find your block of iron. Mm. You all need your block of iron. And if you don't have one, call me. There you go. That'll be it. (laughs) Yeah, I'll be it for you. I sure will. (laughs) That's great. Um, And my last one, of course, I'd be hesitant to not mention the Reverend Billy Graham. Oh, Um, he's been mentioned. Wow. Yeah. The the, the walk he walked, the life he led, by example, uh, you can't be a godly man and not admire what that man did and how he lived his life. Sure. Right. And a a humble man, um, foresight beyond what we could have imagined. Absolutely. Um, But because he was following God's uh, path to be a godly man. So so you talked about legacy um, and you talked about uh, and you talked about to tie some of that together, legacy, I had a discussion with somebody and they were talking about the monetary things to leave behind mm-hmm. and possessions. What are you going to leave for your kids? And I get that. I totally get that. But the legacy we leave behind is way bigger than that. Amen. Amen. Because the legacy that my grandparents or my, uh, the uncle that I had or whoever, just like you stated right here, that those legacies you can't even measure. No. They're beyond anything monetary. So, Absolutely. and then, um, and then about the iron sharpening iron and yes. having men, uh, having men uh, sharpen each other in life. Um, somebody was talking the other day about you only really have in your whole lifetime, you really only have 30 true friends in your life. Yeah. So it's yeah. important to build those relationships and make them strong. 100%. But, um, <clears throat> but even acquaintance wise, or even like our, I'm not promoting our breakfast because there's nothing to promote. It's a breakfast. <laughs> it's a great um, time though. But it's, it's you know, and those that's what guys are doing there. I mean, we call each other, we, we call each other out on stuff. We compliment each other. We build into each other, you know, and it's guys like, like, uh, like uh, Dwayne that need to hear from other men. Absolutely. Hey, you're doing a great job. Absolutely. And they may not, we're uncomfortable hearing that. Um, we're doing a, we did a podcast. Uh, previously with my pastor mm-hmm. and pastor's appreciation was terrible for him because <laughs> it's hard for you to accept that. Sure. But at the same time, men need to know that they're doing a good job and they're being encouraging. So Always. that's cool. I love it. Always. Those are great. Those are awesome. So, good. so now we go to the funny part. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we were all serious at the beginning and then we go to the funny part. I don't know if that's yes. good or not, yes. but, <clears throat> but, and my executive producer has told me we got to get rid of this stuff, but we're not going to. I'm sorry. <laughs> She has helped influence, by the way, you talk about influ- influential people. My wife is is a great influence on me, but believe it or not, on the podcast, because she watches them, she helps critique them. Yes. I may not always agree, but usually I capitulate. And, <laughs> well, and, and I'll speak real quick on, on the woman standpoint. I was very old, I guess, as you can say old, when I got married. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was 40 years old yeah. before I decided yeah. to get married. And uh, I knew it was going to take a tremendously godly woman <laughs> yeah. to get me to that point. And lo and behold, he put her in my life. Nice. And um, you know, we've been married now for since since twenty. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, I tell you, the mark of a man, you can mm-hmm. learn a lot about him by spending time with his yeah, wife. Absolutely. Because 100%. she is my biggest supporter, uh, always in my corner, yep. loves me to no end, yep. and will do anything for me. And as crazy as my ideas are, honey, <laughs> I, know, I know I know you're gonna watch this. Uh, but I appreciate your support. Oh, I do. That's great. And uh, yes, she's great. Well, I gotta one up you on that. Yeah, baby, I appreciate your support too. <laughs> Sorry, can't let you win. That's fine. That. We'll share it. That's okay. That's okay. That's great. That's awesome. See, so godly men are influenced by godly women. Amen. It's important. So it's great. Amen. Good to know all that. So, all right. So now the the funny part. I don't know if I say fun part, but it may not be fun. It is to me. We'll just call it the funny part. So you have some parting gifts. Awesome. Did you awesome. know that? Did you part- listen. You lay it on me. You okay? Here. That's so here you go. Is. Your first parting gift is a valuable. Highly valuable, very expensive, barely, or whatever, whatever. Uh, <laughs> bottle of Mr. Bill's and Bill Ward photography 
uh, hand sanitizer. So that's a shameless plug for my businesses. Also, you like that? Also, get that. But this is very valuable. <laughs> Not really. But anyway, so you have I'll that. I'll cherish it. There you go. <laughs> and you will also receive, since you've been watching, you know all this. You will also receive, and I will autograph this for you, and autographed and numbered. Oh, I forgot the number of the last one. But anyway, <laughs> autographed um, Willie Ace. Baseball card, official Chicago awesome. Cubs baseball card. Awesome. Well, that if it's worth something someday, I'll be shocked. There but anyway, <laughs> whatever. So I will autograph that before you leave. Fantastic. Then one of the very, very, very important things is you get to choose, and I got a brand new batch in yesterday. Uh, you awesome. get to choose a Lego superhero, oh, and you right. say why a Lego, why a Lego superhero. Why? Oh, you're supposed to say why a Lego superhero. Oh, why a Lego superhero. <laughs> yeah, please tell me. I must know. <laughs> That's good. Anyway, that was, that was really, we should time that a little bit. All right, so why a Lego superhero? Because STEM, the, word st the acronym STEM is Science, Technology, Engineering. Mm -hmm. You have to engineer the Lego superhero because it's not put together like there mine, which is already put together. You have to put it together. You have to engineer it. But also because... The men who come in here are superheroes in the faith. So there, there there's go. the tie-in there for go. both of those. So you, you get to choose from, I can't, I think that's Hawkeye. And there's Hulk, and there's Thor, and there's, uh, Dr. no, that's Superman, Vision, Iron Man, Captain America, and or Batman, the only one that's not Marvel. It's got to be Iron Man. Iron Man, yeah, yeah, dude. It's be Iron Man. That, see, that's mine. Oh, see, so there that's you go. Mine. Great Iron Man. Man. Like, there we that. go. Iron sharpens iron. Oh, right? there you go. Yes, cool sir. Deal. That's awesome. awesome. All right, awesome. so you got your parting gifts. Now you got to yes. give us your your sports story. Sports, sports story. related sports story. Related yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. As a, a young kid, Dad and I would always go down to Atlanta to watch the Braves play uh -huh. every summer. Yep. Loved it. This is back when the Braves stunk. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't win unless that thing didn't show up. Right, like, right. Terrible. Yeah. But we loved it. It was a great yeah. time. Well, Dad was also a fast pitch softball player for oh. over 25 years. Nice. He loved that. Those guys and, um, amaze me. Oh, yeah. It's crazy to yeah. watch. It really right. is. Well, one summer, they were having a tournament in Atlanta. So he was like, hey, we'll go down early. We'll catch a Braves game and then go to go to my tournament. Nice. I'm like, fine. And yeah. I think I was probably seven at the time. Cool. You know. Uh, so we go down on Thursday night. So Friday at the hotel, we're in the pool, you know, hanging out. And it was hot. Hmm. Sun was out. I didn't put sunscreen on. Oh, no. Dad, typical male. He didn't worry about it either. Yeah, right. I got so burnt. Man. Oh, wow. <laughs> like sun poisoning burnt. Oh, no. Blisters popped up on yeah. me all over. Oh. Uh, we went to the game that night. I made it to the second inning. Started violently getting sick. Had to leave. Uh, still went to his tournament, but in the car, riding between ball fields, every bump, it was just oh. agonizing pain. Oh my goodness. So long story short, when we get home, when my sweet mother, God bless her, saw me in my condition, I thought she was going to divorce my dad. <laughs> she was furious. Absolutely furious. <laughs> Mike, how could you do that? Yeah. You know, but typical guys, we just didn't know. No, I mean, no, guys right? don't worry about oh, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Cause I was very fair skinned at the time. I'm well, not anymore. Thank God. He finally let me start getting pain. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so it doesn't happen anymore. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was as painful as it was. Oh, then. Wow. It's a funny story to reflect on now. Yeah. We love talking about that. And uh, it was still a great memory nonetheless. Yeah. And, and uh, you, but you missed the game. Unfortunately, yeah, but uh, they lost, no surprise. So, you know, wasn't yeah. too heartbroken over that. Yeah, but, for this uh, generation out there, you don't know what that is to be through a losing, through losing, losing right, years like, uh, like we did with our teams. You know? Absolutely. Yes. All right. Well, very cool. That's pretty neat stuff. So, well, listen, Scott, I do appreciate you being appreciate here, taking you, time to be here. And absolutely. thank you so much. Absolutely. God bless you. God bless you. And thank you guys. Members, subscribe, share. We want you to watch them all. So, take care. Thank you, guys. God bless.